Hey everybody, this is Genuine Polish, and I am going to show you the Morp Farm that I have. So, it's a really simple design, and I like it because you can make it like really early on in the game, and then the longer it's up, the more Morps you're going to have, the more auction production you're going to make. So you can see they're making Pluto Oxygen already, and I know you can find online that there's like uh, optimized uh, travel spaces for the, the most amount of oxygen. I don't know. I've always used this exact setup, and they have 11 tiles of travel space, and I overpressurized my colonies. I had on my main game, I had one of these per each colony at six, cycle 600, and I started at like cycle 200 ish, maybe. And all my colonies are like 10,000 kilograms of pressure from oxygen. Everyone has popped ear drums. It's actually too much. So let's get down, break down the construction. So for starters, you can use any kind of building tile for the outline. And generally, I will have a door down here while I'm building it before the outhouses are full just to uh, just let the duplicates move in, in and out more easily. Alternatively, you could build a ladder right here, but then you have to deconstruct that, and it's a little bit harder than just destroying the door and blocking it up. And also, if you just use the door, you can just lock it once you're done with the construction. So this is the basic setup. It is 13 tiles at the base. On the right side, it is six tiles to include the base tall. On the left side, it is eight tiles to include the base. And then from there, there's four tiles in, the pump, and then seven tiles in. So 13 across and a total of 12 tall, or sorry, 11 tall, and then with these corners you can do whatever you like. You can fill them in, you can leave them with as minimal materials as you want, it's, it's up to you. So the base concept is you have your outhouses, each in an individual room so that the morphs can spawn, and you have a pressure plate here so the morphs will, I'm going to move all my duplicates out and lock the door so that you can better see it. Okay, so you have a pressure plate here, so the morphs will step on it, then they'll either jump to this door, stop on this door, and fall. And then they'll collect down here, and it'll free up these spaces so that new morphs can spawn in a couple of cycles. Okay, so now to break down the automation, I like to have an atmosphere sensor set to 800 grams to prevent the room from becoming too pressurized, and to make sure that you're getting as much oxygen as you can, as frequent as you can. It's not necessary at all. You could have a timer, you could just have no automation, and have the pump running most of the time, because with any amount of more population, you're probably not going to get a vacuum down here. Even if you have the pump running continuously, you might, probably not though, but if you do get a vacuum, the morbs can't produce polluted oxygen. So that's why I like to have the atmosphere sensor, so it's not constantly running, it's not constantly using power, and you're not going to draw a vacuum. So, you might be looking at this and be like, wow, they are not falling down very often. Well, one just fell down right now. And yeah, sometimes it takes a while, but the morph spawn rate is every one, I think it's one and a half to three cycles. I'm sure there's a more definitive uh, number, but it's every couple of cycles. And the thing is with these morphs running back and forth, like it's still cycle one and two of them fell. So if you kind of put it into that perspective, like, Yes, they might take a while to land here and actually do the, the correct movement to jump over here and fall down, but they will. They will before the next morphs are ready to spawn. And I'm going to put a couple up here just to show you that they will, in fact, sort their way out and fall over here. Of course, you're not going to have like 10 morphs up there at one time. Go. And then so you're going to be producing three per the spawn rate. So after a hundred cycles or so, you should be producing enough oxygen to support most of your duplicates. Which, if you're like me, it's only going to be like a total of ten. In, in my biggest colony, I I had like twelve. In my in my longest running game, I mean, my first couple of games, I had like fifty just because I wanted to see how many I could get. But yeah. So after I would say probably two hundred cycles, this will give you enough oxygen for your entire base, and then you can build another farm. You could, you could add more outhouses to like this side and make them fall down. The issue is, is 
I don't like having more like horizontally because then it increases like the travel time and it messes up them falling down in the in the right amount of time. So I generally try to just avoid uh, expanding the, this one and I'll just copy this and then build it, build another one down here. And generally what I'll do is I'll build these on the surface with drywall backing so that they're kind of completely out of the way. And I always use a high pressure gas vent as soon as I get them because again, if you have a huge population of morbs, then they will get well above like 2000 uh, grams of oxygen. So they're just going to be wasting their, they're just not going to be able to supply your base at all. So I like to do a high pressure gas vent. So let's look at the automation. We have the gas atmosphere. It's connected to the pump or the atmosphere sensor is connected to the pump so that it only runs when it needed. We have the pressure plate and it said it its default 10 kilograms. I just haven't found a need to change it. It's connected to this top door, this rightmost door, rightmost top door, all to a knot gate and the output of the knot gate is connected to this bottom door. So the bottom door constantly remains open. Top door, this door is locked. This door just never needs to move and this door is open. And then for the ventilation, super simple, right? You just need some output for the, for the pump. Power, super simple. Also, that's why I like this design. I like to not fill in this because you could, and this is only two tiles tall, so it's not a lot of usable space. But I like this because then anything up to the housing of the pump, you can success from the outside. So you should set it up like this and then have it go immediately out the left side so you can do all of your maintenance here if you kind of overload the pipe or something i mean overload the wire and if you really need you can de deconstruct these tiles so i'm going to fill this up with morbs I'll show you that they will make their way down and show you that this pump is going to be running a lot and i don't know i probably put like 30 40 50 morbs in there maybe 30 and this is not a, a ridiculous amount. I probably had like 100 morbs in mine. And you'll see the pumps like always constantly running. And I like to have these airflow tiles to just help the gas move. And then everything needs to be a pneumatic door. You need to leave these doors open. Have your duplicates set these doors open so that the morbs can freely move back and forth. And don't worry, these will still count as their own individual rooms. This is a 10 size, 10 tile size room, 6 tile, 8 tile. So these are all their individual rooms. And then they'll fall down here. And even if you have a ladder here or anything, it's not going to affect anything. You can They'll still go across and fall to the bottom on their own. It's not going to affect anything at all. And you can see how some of them are like jumping back up. That's an issue because I put like 50 up here, but you're never going to have 50 at a time. They should still all sort their way out to the bottom though. Okay, and you can see with how many we have, it's just a constant flow of 500, gra 500 grams of polluted oxygen. So that's a huge supply. And actually, I've never ran into this problem, but I might have put so many that it might overpressurize this area. Which is interesting, because that makes me think on my other worlds that I my morbs might exceed my pump capacity. So if that happens, right, there's room to expand. You can just go over here, deconstruct this, and put another pump. Super simple, same concept. And then you can just connect this. Again, I haven't got to this point or I just haven't actually properly evaluated my setup. But you just do this, set it up, connect everything and connect the automation wires and then there you go. Because when you have two pumps, you're gonna probably uh, exceed the morb output by a lot. For the time being at least. I mean, a thousand grams a second would be an absurd amount. But yep, so that's the whole setup. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can make it look as nice as you, as you want. You can use insulated tiles if you prefer, or metal tiles. It's just up to you, it's a preference. And then what I like to do is I like to put it at the on the surface, kind of out of the way. I don't know if all these moving bodies and this pathfinding will slow your computer. It probably will eventually, especially with all your other farms, like your hatch farms and everything. It might slow your computer, so I like to put this off screen so my computer is not constantly seeing all these things moving. I mean, of course, you're still going to be doing the calculations. It's just, I don't know. I think maybe it might help. Could, might not. 
But yeah, you can see that they've all worked their way to the bottom. And then if you're not familiar with the more farm concept, just to reiterate, all these outhouses need to be full. They're not full because I'm in sandbox mode and I just spawn morbs. They need to be full and left alone in these rooms. And that's why I would recommend closing the door, removing access, otherwise your duplicates, when they have nothing to do, even if you set this to priority one, if they have nothing to do, they'll come and empty the outhouses and then you'll have to restart. And it's super annoying and a waste time. So yep, you'll have this door unlocked, they'll come and use the bathroom, and then once both of them, or once all of them are full, you just close this door. And what I like to do when they fill up an outhouse, I like to disable it. I don't believe morbs will spawn while it's disabled, but they won't empty that house while it's pending disable or disabled. So once this one's full, you can disable it. This one's full, disable it. This one's full, disable it. And when you're ready to finally set up your farm and close the door, you can just enable everything and close this door here. So that's it. Super simple, super efficient. Doesn't use that much power, especially if you use the atmosphere sensor because the pumps won't constantly be running. I recommend uh, upgrading to the high pressure gas vent as soon as you get plastic so that way you're not missing out. I mean, you can see here there's already 16 kilograms of oxygen in the area, which is absurd. But that just goes to show you, well, it's such a small area also. But that just goes to show you just how much oxygen you can actually produce like this. And I, I, I do believe that based on some resources online, that 11 tiles for movement is not the most efficient for morbs. But that being said, I've also seen those numbers go back and forth. So this is a good setup that works for me. And if you'd like to use it, then I encourage you to. And if you get started on it early, like if you complete it by cycle 25, then uh, you're set. Like you sh Once the more population builds up, you should be set with oxygen. And that way you can save your slime for uh, algae and then algae for natural dirt tiles because Because, like, once you use your slime and algae, you're kind of out of it until you go to space. All right, I hope you liked the video. It's a super simple concept. I'm going to go through the electrical, the ventilation, and the automation one more time just to show you. So, again, this is all redundant stuff that you don't need. It's not part of the actual construction. It's just if you do have an excess of uh, morbs which I don't think you would. Well, you might, you might. Like I said, you might. But so super simple, right? Automation from the pressure plate, top door, right top door, collects to the input of the knot gate. The output of the knot gate goes to the bottom right door. And then these ladders are not necessary. And that's it. Hope you like watching. Hope it was helpful. Uh, let me know if this design worked out for you. I've seen other more designs, but they're a lot more complicated. They use a lot more refined metal. And I don't know. I tried to use some of them before, and they just didn't really work out. So then I just built this, and it's just been working perfect for me this whole time. Yep, let me know if you like it. And then subscribe for more videos like this. I'll be doing a couple more like how-tos for auction not included. I might move on to other games, and I'm just doing a colony playthrough on... My, my channel. So if that's something you'd be interested in watching, I'm trying to get to cycle 1000, then go ahead and click on those videos. Thanks for watching. Peace.